And we welcome you in for the second edition of Diamond Reach. This time we've got Wallace Clark alongside me. Wallace, thanks for uh, stepping into the opposing dugout and having a little ice cream with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so we first got to say, I did not get the flavor he wanted. He asked for black raspberry. Sadly, there was no black raspberry at the ice cream shop. So we had to go with something simple, as he also talked about, as being one of your other favorites of keeping it simple. So it's chocolate chip. I feel like that's a pretty simple mm -hmm. flavor. So why black raspberry and then maybe why chocolate chip as well? I think black raspberry, um, it's my dad's favorite favorite ice cream flavor and it's kind of a cape specialty. So figured when in the cape, you gotta, gotta keep eating it, you know? Oh, 100%. And then um, you said simple. Why do you like your ice cream a little simple? Yeah, I just kind of, I'm not really one for the flair in general, I feel like. So I think I keep my ice cream simple because that's just kind of what I like. I don't know. Yeah. And like your flair, you keep it pretty simple defensively. One of the best defensive infielders on Cape right now. Contis consistently showing off the glove. But what has taken it to get you to that point that you feel so comfortable and you keep it simple every time in high pressure situations defensively. Yeah, I think it's just repetition in general. The more reps you get, the more confident you feel and that builds over time. And I've put a lot of work in over the years with my dad and with uh, with a lot of my coaches to, uh, to get to the point where I'm pretty comfortable getting whatever ground ball I can, I see and just going to get the right hop and making the play. Talk about your dad. Your dad had an illustrious athletic career himself. How big was he in your development as one of these top players on Cape? Yeah, he was he was huge. Obviously, he he got me started at a young age on on a lot of different sports, but baseball specifically and kind of taught me the basics and got me really interested in wanting to be a top-notch player and so his his teaching and a lot of his kind of mindset goals and kind of ways to go about yourself have have helped me a lot throughout my development. And you talk about understanding the development process. How do you think the Cape has allowed you to develop over your month here? Yeah, it's it's obviously the best summer league in the country and you get to see some top arms. You get to see what, what some of the other players are like who who are going to be top prospects someday. And it's, it's obviously good to compete against them. And I think I've talked about it earlier you know it's an elite league and you know you're playing against really great players so you need to you need to go up go up here kind of with the without being too hard on yourself you know you're going to yeah. you're going to face elite competition and you're going to struggle sometimes but that's part of the game and you know handling adversity is also part of the game unfortunately for some but whenever you're up here you just got to have fun and you got to compete and just do what you can do and you talk about the team and the cool thing about summer ball is you have a group of guys that don't really know each other and then you come in and almost end the summer as brothers and for you walk us through that experience of having now a lot of your friends on this summer ball team that you're going to keep close contact with later on in life yeah it is pretty crazy when you think about it i was just telling a couple of the guys yesterday like isn't it isn't it wild we met less than three weeks ago and we're already like boys basically uh -huh. it's it's crazy when you think about it but yeah it's it's super unique experience summer ball in general to kind of make those close friends and grow together over the summer and obviously keep in touch over the the next seasons and years down the line so it's super exciting who's someone that you have taken to like right like that that as soon as you met him you're like all right this is this is my boy there's there's a lot of guys honestly but i'm gonna i'm gonna shout out uh michael detallo <laughs> just because um We've we've uh, we get here early. We hit a lot, especially uh, Anthony Silva too. Mm -hmm. We we were here early a lot, and they've been here since the beginning with me. Um, but Mike's a guy that's just like a, a a classic personality, super funny, but also goes about his business the right way. Tony as well. He goes about his business, working hard every day, and kind of we 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 uh, we're similar in that aspect. Okay. And then coming to Cape Cod. It's one of those premier vacation destinations. You get ice cream. What is something away from the field that has shocked you about Cape Cod or something that is a hidden gem 
about the experience? Um, it's hard to say hidden gem because I feel like everybody, everybody already knows about it, but just in general, the, the atmosphere and the beaches and the, the food in general, you get kind of a combination of a lot of, a lot of great things that I think is super, super great to be a part of. And then on top of it, you come in to Cape and you come blaring, but it really started in spring for you with the Duke Blue Devils. Talk us through your spring about ultimately going back to the place where you started your college career, being selected for the Norman Regional and going back to Oklahoma. Yeah, it was definitely a, <laughs> definitely a roller coaster of emotions. Um, initially going to Duke, I didn't actually really think I'd ever be back to Norman. Um, and so I was, I was excited to kind of to kind of have that experience, and I thought we were a good enough team to come out of that Norman Regional. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way, but there was a lot of good teams in that Regional, and yeah, it was good to uh, good to see some of the old guys. Um, kind of weird being back on the uh, on the visiting dugout, but it was it was a fun experience, and again, it was it was not the outcome we looked for, um, but sometimes that's just that's the sport. So yeah, and you touched upon ultimately you have a brother and it's your brother and your dad a little bit thankful for to get you to be the switch hitting hitter that you are mm -hmm. walk us through how you were able to get into switch hitting for everybody at home yeah i was i was five years old and you know my brother and i would go outside to our backyard and play a wiffle ball with my dad and we would do like yankees versus yankees versus cardinals all the time and I was a big stickler about, oh, this guy's a left-handed hitter. I got to impersonate him. So specifically Robinson Cano, I would be like, oh, he's a lefty. I got to try and swing lefty. And my dad would throw us the ball and he was like, dang, that's, that's a pretty good left-handed swing. So he just got me started on it and uh, kept going ever since. How do you feel so far that the lefty swing is gone for you now that you're at a high competitive level and it, it works pretty well for you you would have to say yeah i would say so i mean it's definitely definitely you got to put in extra hours as a switch hitter compared to just a single-sided hitter um you got to swing on both sides get your reps in but as far as the left-handed swing goes I'm, I'm really comfortable and liking what i'm doing at the plate um sometimes you go through little ruts and whatnot but that's that's everyone so yeah well i can't thank you enough for Sitting down and having a little bit of ice cream for yeah, me. Thank Hopefully you. we can uh, you can finish it up before it melts here on this summer yeah, day. Yeah, of course. Stay tuned for more diamond treats throughout the summer.